Hi everyone. So we're here to have a look at how the State Library of Victoria website can assist you with your research. Like I mentioned, we've got loads and loads of resources available to you. So just head to the State Library of Victoria website, which you can see is just there, www.slv.vic.gov.au. We'll just do the, the Google search like I did. So here we are on the homepage. This is what it looks like. The main thing that you need to remember for your research is this search and discover tab. That's sort of your one stop shop for research. If you're on an iPad, just make sure you turn it to landscape. It just makes it easier to navigate the website there. So click on the blue box, search and discover. Scroll down a little bit. You'll see our catalog over here, our digital image pool, our research guides, and our databases down the bottom. We'll start with our catalog search. So this basically shows everything that we've got in our collection. Some are available online and some aren't, but we'll obviously focus on the online stuff today. So let's just do a simple, something like Ned Kelly, but obviously you make it specific for what you need and search, just like a Google search. You need to start quite broad with our catalog. So if you're searching for John Batman's diary, for example, you probably wouldn't type John Batman's diary, just type John Batman. And then we use these tools on the right hand side to refine further. So you can see over here, we've got online items. So I'll choose that because obviously we can't come into the library at the moment. Online items only. And now it's just showing me all the stuff I can access online. So there'll be eBooks, pictures, audio, manuscripts, things like that which you can see down here in the resource type. Pictures, books, audio, manuscripts. So let's just have a look at manuscripts as an example. If you are studying a certain event or a certain person, this audio here, you might be able to find an interview with the person or about the event and things like that. But let's have a look at manuscripts. So you can see the first one here is letter written by Joe Byrne at the dictation of Ned Kelly. So let's have a look at that. So there's a few different options here. One of my favorites is this citation tool. So I can click citation and it gives me that citation there. Now, if you scroll down a little bit, you've got this link to online resource. This is, this will take you to the actual resource. Okay, so I can see here, if I scroll down, this is known as the derildery letter, which a lot of you might've heard of before. And this is Joe Byrne's actual writing. Now, I'd be pretty impressed if anyone can read that. So luckily for us, we've got it transcribed for us over on the left side here. Click on trans transcription, transcript, and then proceed. And then just scroll down and you can see it's the Geraldery letter transcribed for you. So if I don't want to read it all, there's that handy little trick, control F, where I can just find a keyword, or if you're on an, a Mac, command F, Let's say, for example, I want to know a bit about how Ned Kelly felt about the police. I can just do control F and type in police. And I can see he's mentioned the police here 45 times. So I can get a, you know, I can get some, some evidence about how he was, how he was feeling about the police, etc. We're going to head back to that search and discover, discover tab. So we're back here. We've had a look at the catalog and obviously if you want to choose that date range, you can. Again, if you're trying to find primary sources for history, this is particularly useful. So over here, we've got our digital image pool, which is everything that we've got in terms of our digital images. And these are all images that you're not going to find on Google images with a simple image search. So they're all interesting images that we've got about Ned Kelly. Down a little bit further, we've got the research guides. If I click view all over on this right side, I can see all of the guides that are available to me. So if I'm studying history, I've got research guides specific for history, Australian history. If you're doing legal studies, I've got law over here, anything to do with geography or music, current newspapers, if you're doing politics or anything like that, historic newspapers for history students, Right down the bottom though, this is the real key, is these VCE guides. So just on the bottom on the left, 
click on those, you can see we've got specific guides that are made for ancient history, Australian history, English and Lit, politics and revs. So let's have a look at the English and Lit guide because it'll be applicable to most of you. This has got every single book in the curriculum book play in the curriculum um, available to you featured on this site with a bunch of resources for each of those things. So if I have a look at English list one and I go to novels, I can find the book that I'm studying here and it's got resources at the library, reviews, analysis, videos, which are really useful, and then further resources for every single book in the curriculum. So that is incredibly useful. Just going to head back to search and discover. So that's the guides. The last thing on this page is the databases. Now, if I click on more databases on the right side here and then scroll down, they're arranged by subject. So I can choose the subject that I'm studying and go to that specific database. So fashion over here, health, medicine, legal studies again, current newspapers, historic newspapers, music, science, technology, sport, doing any PE subjects, social sciences, humanities, psychology, things like that. If I want to make it a bit easier for myself, I can go up to here, which is view A to Z of databases, click on that. And then instead of all databases, I just want to click on secondary students. And now I've got the curated list that's been made just for secondary students. So it's a bit easier to sort of follow. So scroll down here. I've got a few really good databases I want to show you. The first one I show you, I want to show you is called ProQuest. This is a great general database, probably cover nearly every subject you could imagine. Now, when I click on it, it's going to ask me to log in. All I need to do to be a member is just go up here and just go register. You just fill in the information. You get a text message on your phone with your barcode and you've got access to this database completely for, for, for free. So let's say, for example, I'm studying something about octopus and how smart they are. Octopus, think of some keywords. I'm going to keep it quite broad. Intelligence, let's start with that. Now I can click on full text. This is to make sure, you know, when you uh, go to Google Scholar and it will only show you a little bit of the text, this is to make sure that it shows you the full text. You've got complete access to that. I can click peer reviewed as well, depending on what I'm studying, but peer reviewed gives you obviously peer reviewed information. Search for that. If you do click peer reviewed, just note that the newspapers parts won't come up. Okay, so here I've got a bunch of different articles to do with my topic. I can add in some refining tools on the left here. If I'm doing a science subject, it'd be good to get the most up to date information. So I could choose maybe the last five years, even the last 12 months, get as up to date as possible. Let's say I choose this one here, just as an example. Here I've got the entire article. Now, obviously this is written in a, in a very academic way. So if you want to use that control F trick again, that's a really good way to sort of make sure that you're understanding what you're reading by just focusing on certain sections. So if I say brain, for example, I can see the brains mentioned eight times and I could just find the parts that relate to what I need to know. So just don't be put off by the academicness of the articles because they can be a little bit difficult to understand. You probably need to be in your fourth year doing science or something to fully understand all of these types of articles, but you can search those keywords and find really great information. What I absolutely love about this is this right side over here. I can do citation and there I can choose what citation I need and I can copy and paste that and put that into my, my assignments that I'm doing saves a lot of time. I can also just go through and email all the ones that I think are, are useful to myself and then sort of come back to them later. Let's head back to that search and discover here. Databases, more databases, view A to Z, and then go to secondary. 
That's how quickly you can find it once you're used to it. The other database I want to show you is Gale Literature. This is a great one for English and, and Lit, so it should be applicable to the majority of you. All right, so here we are, Gale Literature. Let's say I'm studying Frankenstein. Just type it in there. Wait for it to come up. It will give you options. Choose the correct option. And now I've got a bunch of articles and things relating to the text, critical reviews and things like that. So I've clicked on one. And again, I'll use that control F trick and find my keyword keywords and just find it, see if there's any information that's useful for me. The last database I want to show you is called press reader. This database is really useful if you're studying a different language or even if you need to find out things that are happening in other countries, politics and things like that. So press reader, what you can do is find newspapers, articles, magazines from all over the world. So you might be looking into COVID-19 and studying Italy's response versus America's response or something like that. You would be able to look for those sources that you need. If you're studying a different language, obviously, you could find newspapers from that actual country. So if you scroll across, you can see there's all of Australian Vogue is on there, which is really useful for fashion students, people like that. So that's the basics of our website. I hope you found something useful today and make sure you keep a lookout for those subject specific tutorials that are going to be coming in the next few weeks. Thanks very much, everyone.